Thread, I'm just going to use a black thread, 8 0 in uni. And just start with thread at the eye, just put down a layer of thread about 3mm or so from the eye, and then come back up. Just up about a millimetre from the eye. This is where I'm going to tie in the bronze mallard to form the cloaked wing. Now I've got this is a small to medium sized bronze mallard feather. The thing I'm going to do is take away the rubbish at the bottom. And then I'm going to bring out most of the fibres from the, the stem and I'm going to try and line them up, as you see there, as close as I can. And that's and then tear them away from the feather. You end up like that. What I like to do though is to mix these up. Meaning what I just basically once they're lined up I roll them within my fingers. Let's displace the fibres and make them basically. I find them to sit much easier and better. There we are. Now the way I'm going to form the cloaked wing is to tie the bronze mallard forward the eye. Normally you would what you would do is just basically once you've tied your tail on and your body and your whatever, then you would roll these round all the way around the shank. But this way I find it's actually once you get into it it's actually quite easy, simple to do. Length again is up to yourself, bring it back so you can see, you can have them short towards the back of the hook, long depending on the style that you want to tie, I mean it just depends, like in the Irish locks are like a good size length in it, but in the, the locks here in the UK, the lighter dressed version, and this suits the lighter dressed versions, so when you tie it, the length of the, the hook, just slightly under, Tie it forward to the eye, leaving that one millimetre space. Just going to roll it around using the thread, just encouraging it. Now, before you go any further, you can check to see how much you've got, and it is reasonably spread around the shank. Because at this point, you can always go back, see the much room you have, which is fine. And then, what I'm going to do is start to work my way down. And then we trim it at an angle. So it helps to give you a taper for the body. And then carry on all the way down. Now I'm actually going to stop the thread quite short, meaning really most times you should stop in line with the barb of the hook. In this case I'm going to stop in line with the point of the hook. So it's going to be a slightly shorter version. Then I'm going to tie in this is a golden pheasant breast feather, in this case it's dyed red. And I want about just half a dozen fibres. Length of the shanks, just length of the tail. Just tie that on the top. Now that's two turns, but on the bare hook. Trim away the waist, just basically the full length of the body. Then I'm going to put some back to my bronze mallard feather the one I used to get the, for the wing. Take again about half a dozen fibres and lay that on the top the same length. This time when you start to work my way back up with a couple of turns, there you go. It's got a nice mix. And then trim again the full length of the body. The rib of the fly is just going to be, this is a small copper wire Catch this on the side and then just basically at this point tie them in. Make sure these are well tied down. And you can see your taper there. So here we are. Then for the body, I'm use this is basically a, a black claret, a dyed black claret peacock kettle. I use a couple of strands. Pull them in together here so that the tips line them up 
and the way back down I'm going to tie this in so just put a loose turn round and pull it into the ends and bring your thread down until it meets the tail and then come back up now the weakest fibre is the peacock kettle so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to wind this towards myself so that when I bring the rib the same way I wind my thread which is away I'll catch in more of the herald you'll see the, the rib and it'll be well protected as well we get to this point just basically take the thread across turn onto the herald and I turn onto the hook to lock it do the same again and it shouldn't move two is enough because you've got to remember the, the, the wire's going to hold all that now for the body hackle I'm going to use a dyed red this is a badger hackle and it's a saddle and all I'm going to do is remove the some of the fibres at the bottom now I'm going to offer it to the side and the good side of the feather facing myself just put a bit of wax on my thread and with the, the point of the hackle facing over the eye it's so when I bring the thread up I can tie in it, tie it in a wee bit more in at the head area but that's enough to catch it just now and then you're looking turn and a half or two turns at the head area and then uh, it's up to yourself three to four turns down the body cross your rib and then come up nice and tight just tying these in I usually break away the hackle at this point and then draw the bronze mallard towards the back and I can see the end of the hackle, the stem seems fiddly at this but basically it's, it's not as easy once you're at this point you can bring your thread to the front two or three turns in tying in the wire which now I can bend and break off trim away the wee what's left of the stem of the, the hackle tidy up the area a bit of wax on it and it's just it's, it's a good way of tying in the bronze mall because you get a, a nice spread and length to suit yourself now this is a good fly in itself I mean you could tie off and that's that finished as you see you get a nice shape but you can finish off with, uh, I'm going to put some jungle cock on now I'm going to tie in a split eye I've got here, I've got plenty of split jungle cock so a single eye does just looking for one that's about the right size just to give an impression, you don't need a monster eye and if you look at this, this eye here you see there's a kind of split these are ideal, it's the right type of shape so if you're looking at a cape where you want to sort of use a single eye and then split it if no, you get capes like this and this is one eye, this is the reason why I bought this and it's very easy, I just encourage you to split by separating them just like peeling them apart as you can see there and then pull back the fibres that you don't want just draw them back see how it's looking I like to try and tie on that black area at the bottom of the eye and then it's just a matter depending on where you want them to sit on the sides along the, sh the shank of the hook or up slightly up into the, the fly it's up to yourself I usually just let them settle in see the best way to sit um, to me you can shorten the eye make it bigger or whatever in this case I'm going to go back because I want it slightly shorter just separate my bit more if you're not happy you can always go back just make the eye a wee bit weird and just two or three turns that looks better we've got wax on my thread I'm going to fold this back shouldn't pull out and I'm going to trim it away 
Just watch a bronze mallard, you don't cut it or even your eye. Just take your time at this point. And then just quick finish. Always keeping the thread nice and tight. And all I have to do is varnish. See how it looks. I always like a fly to sort of, once it's had a swim in the water, it you start to get that nice shape. And uh, as long as you get that balance at the start, it should end up like that. So then all I have to do is a wee bit of varnish. And apply it with a needle. And in my case, I'm using a small brush. Just wipe it all the way around. I'll just allow that to dry and then add another coat and that should be it. Just make sure the eye is clean. And it's clean anyway, so... Anyway, I hope... I hope you enjoyed that. It's a wee simple dressing. It's a bit of a colour combination, you need to tie it. That's, but this is a nice colour that works well. And uh, it gives the impression of a few terrestrial type flies. But anyway, that's your cloaked style or version of the dabbler.